Hey, hi, what's up? So it is my birthday. I am now 25 years old. So I've seen a fair few people for like 25th birthdays do the whole 25 facts for 25 years thing, which I think is lovely. It's a beautiful idea, but it's not very booktube So I am twisting it up a little bit and I'm gonna do 25 books for 25 years. Otherwise known as 25 books that I have read in my 25 years of existence that mean a lot to me that I would recommend to people to get an idea of the things that I care about and the things that I am as a person and also just books that I that touched me and changed my life that I think might change other people's lives if they read it too. So first up on the list is Alice in Wonderland. Shock, horror, everyone knows that I love this book. First of all, it is whimsical and nonsensical and delightful to read as a child. Second of all, it is fascinating to read as an adult when you understand the basis of the nonsense and the reason why they're there is like mathematical and logical puzzles and just Lewis Carroll was just a remarkably clever and fascinating man as a mathematician and a lover of language and linguistics. Next up we have The BFG by Roald Dahl because A, all of Roald Dahl is beautiful and should be read by all children ever and B, The BFG is an absolutely beautiful example of how it is always beneficial and important to be a nice person even if everyone around you is not being a nice person. Next up we have The Little Prince because The Little Prince reminds you of the importance of maintaining your childlike wonder even when you feel like an absolutely jaded and shitty and bored and grumpy adult. Be the elephant in a world full of hats. Next up we have Peter Pan aka a bittersweet story about the joys of childhood and also the importance of learning when it is time to grow up which I think is something that we all struggle with. Next up we have Haroon and the Sea of Stories which not many people have heard of but which I think is absolutely adorable and a very important read if you want to be reminded of the wonders of imagination. Next up we have The Fairy Tales of Oscar Wilde aka Do You Want to Have a Big Old Cry because these books will give you a big old cry. Beautifully worded, wonderful language and fascinating human stories. Book number seven is the number one ladies detective agency and all of the books that follow it because oh my gosh heartwarmingness, strong independent women, female detectives, insight into other cultures and other ways of looking at the world all in one book. So yay. After that we have Cold Comfort Farm to remind you of the importance of meddling in other people's lives in a positive way because sometimes interference can be a good thing. <laughs> After that we have The Hobbit aka The Story of Adventure. After that we have The Five People You Meet in Heaven which is worth a read if you want a unique insight into death as well as being a beautiful reminder of how the little things that we do in our life can impact others in sometimes big beautiful and meaningful ways. So remember that your little actions count. After that we have The Curious Incident of the Dog in the nighttime, which is a wonderful reminder to be understanding of the people around us because their experiences can be very, very incredibly different to ours, but it doesn't make them any less worthwhile. After that, we have To Kill a Mockingbird, the book that ends up on everyone's list of recommended books that everyone should read because, oh my gosh, I'm not even really going to go into why To Kill a Mockingbird is an important book for almost anyone to read ever because just Google it and you will, <laughs> you, will you will know. After that, we have Jane Eyre, which is turning up surprisingly late on this list for a book that is basically my number one book that you should read if you want to know what I'm like as a person. It has some strong and powerful messages about the importance of the way in which you treat children and the importance of respecting children and not abusing them and also children's right to education, all of which are things that very much are dear to my heart. After that we have The Catcher in the Rye, aka a reminder that people can get very fucking depressed sometimes <laughs> and that's okay. After that we have Fahrenheit 451, the book that will remind you why it is important to cherish all of your books and do not ever throw any books out. Keep them, they are important because one day the book apocalypse might happen and then you will be very sad that you don't have a hoard of books hidden in your basement. After that we have The Great Gatsby, a very poignant reminder of the difference between love and infatuation as well as all of the disenchantment in the 1920s and the golden age and the depression and all of that kind of stuff but the most human part of it of course is what happens when you think you're in love but you're actually not. After that we have The Handmaid's Tale, a very very important reminder of why it is important to respect women and not let ourselves end up in a terrifying misogynistic dystopian society. After this we have The Blind Assassin, a beautiful insight into human relationships, familiar relationships. I can't say anything else without spoiling things but it is it's lovely. After this we have A Hundred Years of Solitude, an insight into magical realism, Latin American culture and the importance of just because something seems mystical and magical and unusual to you does not mean that it is perfectly ordinary and acceptable and a part of someone's very real identity and life. After this we have A Monster Calls, a very raw and real 
and informative and gripping outlook on grief and handling grief and loss. After this we have Homegoing, my top read of last year because oh my gosh what a beautiful story. I'm just gonna have to give you a link to another video in which I talk about Homegoing and how important it is. But after that we're gonna talk about Emma. An interesting insight into the impact that being in an oppressive or conservative society can have on young imaginative and intelligent minds. After that we have Fingersmith which I have talked about in a very recent video as being a wonderful twist on historical fiction reminding us that just because history is written one way doesn't mean we can't speculate in very new and interesting ways about what might have been happening behind closed doors. After that we have Six of Crows which is a wonderful reminder of the fact that YA fantasy books can in fact have a very diverse representation in terms of both race and sexuality and all kinds of mental illnesses and just Beautiful. Last but definitely not least, and also not surprising to anyone ever, is of course The Buried Giant. The book that reminds you of how important it can be to cherish your memories and how the bad memories along with the good are what make your relationships with the people around you and so just because you have shit times in your life and in your past and in your memories of your relationships with the people around you doesn't mean that you love or care about them any less or that your relationship with them is any less beautiful as it is. And that's it, they're my 25 books for 25 years. If you happen to be curious to get to know me better as a person or to read a book that I clearly would recommend to you as a book that will touch your life or change your life or your outlook on life in some way, shape or form, then please just pick any one of these 25 books and I am sure that you'll either at the very least gain a better insight into me as a person and a reader and hopefully at the very most gain some nice poignant insights into the world in general. So yay, happy birthday to me. I hope you're having wonderful day. I hope I'm having a wonderful day because it's not actually my birthday when I film this. <laughs> I will see you for another video very shortly I'm sure and until then as always stay classy. Mwah. Sit there and count your little fingers Unhappy little girl blue